Hi, I'm Summer Inanen. Hey, I'm Sarah Ramsden. And we are nutritionists answering your questions. So today we have a question from Amy in Toronto who asks, every morning I make myself a smoothie. Is that not healthy for me? Should I be doing that? Is there an issue with smoothies? This is controversial. People who love their smoothies really love their smoothies. I know, I know. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of context to this too. So there's a lot of variations on a smoothie, but we're gonna kind of take like a classic green smoothie to answer this question. Right, and smoothies really cross all dietary boundaries. Um, people who are paleo, but less so I think, um, vegetarians, vegans, typical Canadian um, diet kind of eaters. Um, yeah, there's a stigma that it's like the master health food, that it's like so healthy that you have your smoothie. And, you know, if we look at kind of, you know, like a classic green smoothie, it generally has something like, you know, a banana, um, like half a cup of blueberries. Um, or half an apple, something like that. Yeah. And just that alone is 25 grams of sugar. Yeah. And then, you know, people will add to it maybe some fat, like some nut butter or some avocado or coconut milk. Often not. I often see people, it's mainly just like fruit with a little bit of veg and then, you know, maybe a protein powder, like a whey protein powder or, you know, like a vegan based uh, protein powder. And then sometimes there's some superfoods added, like You know what? I see a lot of people and, um, you know, they're a lot, are quite often the, the raw style people, vegetarians, unfortunately. And I see a lot of pictures on Instagram and it's, I've added half a mango and um, half a cup of blueberries and... Um, I don't know, half an apple and a tablespoon of hemp seeds for my protein. And it's like... I would be starving. I would rip somebody's arm off in like an hour after I, I ate that. I would crash big time. It's so much sugar. <laughs> yeah. And it, we know it's it's a different kind of sugar. So, you know, it's, it's obviously got a lot of nutrients and vitamins. It's packed a lot differently. But if you look at a classic green smoothie like the one that we laid out for you, that has like 25 grams of sugar in it. Now, a Snickers bar and a Kit Kat bar have about the same amount of right. sugar. Now, we know they're totally different foods. We get it. One of them is a lot more nutrient dense than the other. But in a liquid form, your body really doesn't know the difference. Yeah. And what about all these studies? Yeah. So studies have shown that, you know, in terms of the satiety signals, that it, they're, they're not as strong when we consume food in liquid form. So in other words, you don't feel as full than if you were to actually eat those exact foods on a plate. And studies have also shown that you tend to eat more when you consume uh, food and liquid food. So throughout the day, overall, your caloric consumption is a little bit higher. And we just notice this from our own clinical experience as well, right. working with clients. Again, taking that, that green smoothie classic, which is like a banana, um, half a cup of blueberries or half an apple plus all the whatever superfoods you want to add in. I would never eat a whole banana and half an apple at once. Like that's an awful lot of, of fruit in one sitting. Like, and that just goes to show how when it's in liquid form, it just doesn't register in the same way in the body. Mm -hmm. um, and, and studies have shown this, like sugary drinks, even smoothies, like that, that just does not register as um, caloric intake. And so you end up eating and consuming a whole lot more food than you would otherwise. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then, you know, oftentimes people are using a protein powder as the protein source, and really the, the nutrient density on that is a lot less than what you'd find in real food. Like, we would much rather you eat, you know, a couple eggs, two or three eggs, or maybe more if you're a larger person, get all of those vitamins and minerals packed with the healthy fat already in there, already, like, in the way Mother Nature intended you to eat them versus a powder that has basically been stripped down to just its amino acid and then sometimes added vitamins back. You don't get the same benefit. Right. It's not as simple as taking a protein, adding the vitamins and minerals back in, um, most commonly in a synthetic form that your body has trouble using and without all those other synergistic nutrients that come in food help you use it and utilize it that much better. Yeah. Now, here's the, the thing we always get is like, is it, it's faster for me. It's a lot faster for me. Well, I, I challenge you. this. Yeah, I really challenge this. We actually would love to like record ourselves and see who can make a smoothie versus make breakfast in a pan faster. I don't see how it's faster. I just, I, do, I fail to see that. I, I, 
uh, we don't. And the washing up time yeah. after. Yeah. But also, we want you taking more time to eat. Like, we want you to slow down to actually see the food on your plate. When you right. see what you're eating, you get a lot more psychological satisfaction. And then you're less inclined to eat more later in the day than if you're just sipping on something and not really seeing all the food that kind of went into that. And it's that digestive process. It starts in the brain and then you're chewing food. This is an integral part of eating your food. When you when you drink a smoothie, and I've had no nutritionists who chew their smoothies, yeah. which is a little odd, but that's so the they're, they're trying it. to get over it. But a lot of people just drink it down with a straw and away it goes. It's just not the same from a digestive point of view. Yeah. Even though it's pre-digested food, which really should just be safe for people who have dysphagia so they have problems swallowing. Yeah. And from a cultural perspective, you know... You will, if you go to France, <laughs> if you go to Paris, you will never see a woman walking around with a smoothie. It's just not the thing to do. It's the height of class over there. I'm from Europe. People don't walk around with smoothies. It's very much a North American thing. People sit down and they take time over their food. They socialize over their food and they chew it. And you know, like it's, it's not this big hurried thing. It's, it's something that we give a priority to. Yeah. So. so yeah, so those are really kind of our issues with smoothies, why we don't recommend them for our clients. But as always, you know, you really have to figure out what works for you. If you are like, I feel amazing with my smoothie, I'm full until lunch, I'm making better choices throughout the day, I feel so energized, I'm achieving my goals, great, it's working for you, keep doing it. That's what we want to see. But we would never, we don't recommend them as a primary no. form of food for our clients unless it's like a dire emergency, like they really right. have no time in between maybe say lunch and their workout and they have to get something in. Something on the, like on the public transport and you just yeah. don't want to be touching anything. You know, that's the only time that I've recommended a smoothie to someone. And even then, she, ma she made the point, my client made the point that I have to add so much fruit to make it palatable because you expect it to be something sweet. You want it to be dessert-like. I don't know anyone who throws their kale salad with beet and, you know, goat cheese and cucumber and peppers into a blender and eats it. Like, it's just not appealing. Yeah. And for anyone that has any issues with, with sugar, like with, you know, whether you're, you know, like psychologically you have some issues with it, um, or you are someone who has poor blood sugar regulation, maybe you know, you're know you overweight, obese, trying to lose weight, like we would never recommend it in that context because you're really just replacing you know your regular sugar fix donut breakfast with something that's kind of giving you that same psychological response. But again, you know, in the context of someone who's super healthy, they feel really good with it, like keep doing if it works for you. So you have to figure it out. So we're not anti-smoothie, we're just giving you kind of the science and our clinical experience as to why we don't recommend it to our mm -hmm. clients. I have seen some nutritionists who have some good recipes and it's literally the only fruit in there is half a cup of blueberries, which is very low in the glycemic index, but there's a bunch of other things in there. But that's not a sweet thing and that's not what the yeah. majority of people are consuming as their smoothies. So. I made that, that once in a cooking class as a demo and everyone told me it was disgusting. <laughs> wow, <big success>. So, <laughs> there you go, when you actually make it with lots of vegetables uh, and not a lot of fruit, doesn't always win over a crowd. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you have questions for us, please email them to asksummerandsarah at gmail.com and we will answer them in an upcoming episode. And we want to hear from you. Do you like your smoothies? Are you a smoothie person? Tell us. And don't get off. defensive. We're just giving you like the studies. We're giving us our clinical, in like, clinical yeah. experience. Don't hate. Don't hate the smoothie haters. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll chat to you later. Bye. Bye.